So hello and welcome. It is so great to be able to welcome you to this week's online service here at New Life Church Centre in Withall. I'm Rachel, I'm a leader here at the church and it's a real privilege to be able to welcome you and I'm looking forward to worshiping and gathering with you in this way online today. Now our service today is going to last around about 40 minutes. We'll have a time of sun worship, we'll also pray together, uh, we have the, the Word of God being brought to us today by our elder Ken Brook. And we continue with this new series, Encouragements for the Journey of Faith, where we look at Joshua 6. And the message today is entitled, Overcoming Obstacles. So let's start our service by worshipping together with this first song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder and show
Now we know that life isn't always easy. It throws up its uh, trials and uh, tribulations and problems that each and every one of us face. And as Christians, that is no different. I just want to read from um, Isaiah 40 and start at verses uh, 28 through to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men will stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise and soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not go, grow weary. They will walk and not faint. As we sing this next song together, let's be reminded of those words that we've just listened to and be encouraged in our faith.
let's just pray. Lord, we thank you where we can worship in this way, Lord, in our own homes today. Lord, we thank you that you are our peace and you are our strength. And Lord, that we don't walk uh, this journey of life alone. Lord, that you are with us. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we pray right now we bring any situation or circumstance, any trial or obstacle that might be in our way, Lord, that we might be struggling with. Lord, we just bring that to you now. Lord, we just trust you. Lord, and we ask you, Lord, to make a way where there doesn't seem a way sometimes. Lord, we ask you to, uh, Lord, just help us in our steps as we continue to walk with you. Lord, as we listen to this word, may we be encouraged today. May our hearts be open and our ears are listening. Lord, and that you will speak into hearts and lives and each and every person that is watching right now. Lord, will be encouraged in their journey of faith with you. Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen. So now it comes to that time where we listen to the word of God. So today's message is entitled, How Do We Overcome Obstacles? Well, good day, everybody, and God bless you. Thank you for joining with me today in this online service as we continue to look into the book of Joshua for our, our theme and our thoughts today and uh, we remember that last week Pastor brought to us the, the thoughts at the beginning of, of the book of Joshua where Joshua was now going to take over from Moses but God had made him the promise that the same God that was with Moses and that had led Moses was now going to lead Joshua as he took the people into the promised land. And uh, the thoughts from Pastor last week was this, that was a, a journey going into the promised land and it was a journey not really knowing the future uh, and what would happen, but therefore having trust in God uh, to overcome what may be happening to them as they travelled on this journey and that God would be with them to lead and to guide them. Let's just pray before we go any further. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the inspiration of it. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us. Now as we look into your word and we, we uh, think about your word and the theme that we have this day, Lord, we just pray that you will enlighten us, Lord, Help our understanding of what you want to say to us by your Holy Spirit this day. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So the thought and the theme for today is on obstacles and overcoming obstacles. I can't say it's a, a title that I've ever put to anything before obstacles, but you know, it, it's a, a, a thing that you, I suppose you could link along with problems or things that come up against us in life, but obstacles are a thing that need to be overcome. And just to look basically at what the dictionary has to say about this, it says, obstacle, a thing that blocks one's way or prevents or hinders progress. And so obviously the children of Israel we're not just going to march into the promised land and the fullness of the promised land without any obstacles. And just like ourselves in our Christian life and Christian walk, indeed as in everyday life, we come across obstacles and obstacles that need to be overcome. And so one of the problems, one of the obstacles that came up against the children of Israel was a certain city called Jericho. Now, we may all know the story, and sometimes we've told the children the story of uh, what happened at the uh, city of Jericho and how that city was overcome, but it was a definite obstacle to uh, the children of Israel. 
And you might ask the question, well, why bother with that one city? It wasn't a particularly large city. Certainly it was fortified by great thick and high walls. It was a fortified city, but why bother with it? Why not just leave it there and carry on into the promised land? Uh, and I, I bear this point out by saying that the city could be marched round in a day by the whole of the children of Israel uh, and the priests and the armed men could march round this city in a day. So it couldn't have been that large. Um, so why bother with it? Why try to overcome it? And indeed we have some facts on the reason possibly why it had to be overcome. You know, you could have said, well, why don't they just leave that city there and march on into the promised land and all the fullness of that. But as I say, there are one or two facts that caused it to be an obstacle that had to be overcome. And it reads like this, the Canaanites civilization was so totally corrupt that coexisting with them would have been a serious threat to the survival and spiritual welfare of the Hebrew nation. So we see that this city, and the, not the city itself, but the people of this city would be a, th a serious threat to uh, the children of Israel, to worshipping their God, because obviously they didn't worship the true and living God, um, uh, and they worship their own gods, and the corrupt city and the sin of that city would have reached out to the uh, people as they dwelt in that land. It would have always been there and always have been an obstacle and a problem. This is borne out with another fact that says Jericho is one of the most ancient cities on earth first mentioned in the Bible and the record of that is in Numbers 22 and 1 and it says the walls of the fortified city enclosed only about seven acres thus a large, large portion of its people lived in the surrounding countryside. They retreated inside the city walls not wishing to fight Israel because of their fear. So we find, as we said, this was not a particularly large city in landmass, only seven acres it said there, and this is borne out by, as I said, by the fact that the children of Israel could march round it in a day, and a lot of the inhabitants of that city actually lived outside the city walls and uh, retreated within the city when any danger came along the way, as they did when the children of Israel encamped around about them there. Um, but when we say this, when we think about this, if it had been left, if this obstacle had not been overcome, the people from that city, once the, the children of Israel had marched on into the Promised Land, would have then come out from the city, coexisted with um, the children of Israel and brought their sin and their beliefs and their corruptness to bear upon the children of Israel. That was not God's plan. He wanted perfection. This was a promised land and when God gives something, he gives perfection. So this obstacle had to be overcome. And for us today to realise as well as obstacles we read about in Joshua, we too in our lives come up against obstacles. And indeed, it needs to be said that there are obstacles that we need to overcome. We might think that, well, it doesn't matter, I can just leave that there, leave that, leave that problem there, that obstacle there, and move on with my life. But indeed, as the people of that city would have corrupted and brought problems to the children of Israel, so an obstacle possibly left in our life, something that maybe has been there for years, can keep us from the fullness of what God wants and of the plan and purpose and blessing that God has for our life. So just as Jericho had to be overcome, so do the problems 
in the obstacles in our life have to be overcome. Let us then read, and it is 21 verses, but it, it's, we will get there that pretty fast, uh, this account again of how God dealt with this obstacle. And indeed, we can draw from that that the same God that was with Moses, with Joshua, is with us. As he helped them overcome obstacles, so he can help us to overcome obstacles in our life that would keep us from the fullness of what he wants for us. So we read then from Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Josh Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valour. You shall march round the city, all your men of war. You shall go all around the city once. Thus you shall do for six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march round the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass that when they made a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the walls of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priests, said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant, let the priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march round the city, and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was, when Joshua had spoken to the people, that the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord, advanced and blew the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests, blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark, while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. <clears throat> now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, Shout, then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going round it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took the, up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched round the city once and returned to the camp. And so they did this for six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they arose early about the dawning of day and marched round the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched round the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all her that are with her in the house, because they hid the messages that we sent. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take to the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord, they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into that city, every man straight before him. And they took the city and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and women, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. 
Now, you could have said to me, you could have left that last verse out, that doesn't sound very nice, but it just shows how necessary it was for this obstacle to be overcome and to be utterly wiped out uh, because of the wickedness uh, and that, that the people had that was within that city. It, the obstacle had to be completely overcome and this is what happened on that day and when the Lord got rid of that obstacle of Jericho. Now <clears throat> we'll look back again at certain things in a few minutes but just for us then to ask ourselves do we have an obstacle in our life? <clears throat> do we have something that keeps us from the fullness of God's promise to us and God's plan for our life. And just as the obstacle of Jericho would have kept the children of Israel from the fullness of what God wanted and had of that land, so an obstacle in our life may keep us from the fullness of what God has and wants for us. Now, what may be that obstacle? I don't know what may be my obstacle. I possibly do know, and God will show us. And God can show us an obstacle or something in our life, something that maybe we've overlooked, something that we put to one side and thought, well, I can go round it. It's there, but it doesn't matter. There is so much more, but it keeps us from the fullness of what God wants for us. What may that obstacle be? I don't know, but to give you some examples, it can be an obstacle, obviously, of sin, a sin that in our life that needs dealing with. It could be doubt, it could be unbelief, it could be fear, it could be low self-esteem, it could be other people with other people's opinions and what they say to us. It could be time, that is a great obstacle to us, an obstacle to us for, that can keep us from communicating with God, praying to Him, can keep us from church attendance, can keep us from looking into His Word. Yes, time can be a great obstacle to us, or perhaps it's the lack of time that is the obstacle to us, but something that needs overcoming. Just some examples. I only give the examples. It, it is yourself and, and God that would, as God shows you that you need to deal with something in your life, an obstacle that keeps you from his fullness. And I trust that we will do that, that we will search ourselves, we will look within ourselves to see if we have an obstacle that needs overcoming. How then to overcome obstacles. And in this point we have three seas, not seas like Galilee or seas like the Mediterranean or what have you, but three words that begin with sea and will help us to overcome in our life. Just as we see the children of Israel done through Joshua and with Joshua, they overcame this because of these three C's. And the first one is communication. Joshua had great communication with God. He spoke to God, even more so he listened to God when God spoke to him. And he had this communication. He didn't try and work out the problem of Jericho for himself. He didn't try and get rid of the obstacle by his own thoughts. He communicated with God, talked about the problem, listened to what God said about overcoming him, overcoming with him and with the children of Israel. And we find that through Joshua, he spoke to the people and led the people in that, in the communication that they had with God. They listened to what God had to say. They spoke to God about the problem that they had, about the obstacle of uh, Jericho. And they listened to the instruction 
that God gave them. Even though they probably didn't understand quite how this was going to happen. They possibly didn't understand the reason for going about it in this way. And we might be like that. We might think of it in our own thoughts and, you know, not listen to what God has to say to us about overcoming an obstacle in our life. It might seem strange to us with the way that God leads us, but we see here that God's way is the best way. And often we don't understand the way that God does something and deals with obstacles. But it is so important, this first C that we have is communication, communication with God through the Holy Spirit and through his word that he might lead us into the fullness, that he might rid us of any obstacles that are in our life. The second C is that of compliance. Complying with God. It's one thing to listen to him, it's one thing to hear what he said, but it is another thing to act upon it and do uh, what God instructs us. And we find here again that Joshua and the children of Israel complied with what God had them to do, with the instruction that he gave with them. And it has to be said here, the children of Israel were not very famous for actually doing this so many times that they had gone their own way, not acted upon what, the instruction that God had given them through Moses. Indeed, for this reason why they had wandered in the wilderness and not many of them actually got to the promised land for all those years. But we have to say, on this occasion, they complied, they listened, they complied with what God said. We do not hear of them murmuring against their leaders. We do not hear, read about them uh, questioning God. And they complied, as we see. What a thing to have to do. Um, march round that city for seven days. You know, as I've said, they marched round. Um, it couldn't have been that larger city because on the seventh day they went round seven times. But you know, they must have asked themselves, the although they didn't moan against it, they must have asked themselves, why God? Why do we need to do it uh, this way? And there are two reasons for this. You know, people have tried to give reasons to why the walls fell down. I've heard things about, oh, it was the vibration of the people's feet that walked round. Some silly explanations. Man has to have an explanation that fits in with his little brain from time to time. Heard somebody else say, well, the walls didn't actually fall down, but the people got so fearful of seeing the people that they opened the gates and the walls didn't actually fall down, but it appeared that the city was overcome because of the fear that they had, uh, silly explanations. The explanation that this was a miracle of God. We're talking about Almighty God here, who doesn't do things the way that man has to, has to see and has to have them done. He moves in his own way. He created all that is. This was a mighty miracle of God. Point I'm coming to. Why didn't he just do this on the first day? Why didn't he do this on the first march? Why did they have to have a march? Why didn't they just just let the, not let the walls just fall down, knock the walls down by his mighty power? And the answer to that is obedience and faith. Obedience and faith. He wanted to see obedience in the children of Israel as he took them on this journey. He wanted to see their faith in him. And this was demonstrated when he gave this instruction to them. And he gave specific instruction of how it was to be done, how the march was to take place with the priests, with the trumpets, um, with the Ark of the Covenant, with who marched in what order. And when they complied with this, then we see the end result. But what God wanted to see was obedience and faith. And with ourselves, that is what he wants to see. He wants to see obedience and faith. 
And when we do this, when we comply with God, when we show obedience in doing things His way and not our way, so often we want to do things how we should, how we think they should be done. But showing obedience and showing faith, even when we don't understand His ways and is how we overcome the obstacles in our life. That is the second C. The final and third C that we come to is confidence. Having confidence in his God, in, in God, in his word and in his promise and following these instructions. Having faith, having trust and having confidence. How do we do that? By drawing near to him by being close to him, through his word, through his Holy Spirit, through communication with him and through compliance with his instruction to us. We then build, build and bolster our own faith, so much so that we can then very much have confidence in him and confidence that we can overcome the obstacle or obstacles in our life that would keep us from the fullness of what God wants for us and for our lives. So I trust in that what we have said, how to overcome obstacles is communication with God, in complying with God's instruction and for having confidence through faith and trust, His Word, His Holy Spirit, we can have confidence that He will overcome in our lives that obstacle that might keep us from a close walk with him. Talking about faith, we have a chapter in Hebrews, chapter 11, which is known as the faith chapter. And in that, there are lists given of people and things and happenings throughout the word of God where faith was demonstrated and in Hebrews 11 and 30 we find that this very thing, this very subject that we have read and talked about this, morning, this day um, is mentioned and it's talking about by faith and these various things were done. Hebrews 11 then and 30 says, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. It was by faith that the obstacle was overcome and the faith that the children of Israel had in their God. So, the challenge to you this day is then, will you act in faith to overcome your obstacle? Communicating with God, complying with God, and having confidence that he can and he will and he wants to help you to overcome any obstacle in your life that keeps you from a closeness with him. A final scripture then from Psalm 37 and 34 says, Wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt you to inherit the land, just as the children of Israel inherited that land and the fullness of that land, overcoming the obstacles, so we can then obtain that ground, that land of a fullness of God's purpose and plan for our lives. Well, God bless you. I just pray that this has been a help to you today, that this uh, what we have had, this study that we are having and looking at from the book of Joshua will be a great help as we this day have discussed, have indeed learned how to overcome obstacles that would keep us from the fullness of God in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have indeed said you want to help us to have this closeness and this fullness with you. And Lord, you want to help us to overcome any obstacles that would keep us from that. 
So as we examine ourselves, as we allow you by the Holy Spirit to put your finger upon anything that is an obstacle and a stumbling block in our life, that Lord, we will act upon that in faith, allowing this obstacle to be removed. And just as the walls of Jericho fell down, so the obstacles of our life that would keep us from you will fall down. Lord, we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Well, we thank Ken for bringing the Word of God to us today in this online service. We all do face obstacles from time and occasion, do we not? The very Jericho walls that seem so impregnable, God just reduced them to rubble and they just walked in. So let's realise that God can reduce, of course, any obstacle uh, and open a way for each and every one of us. So just take this in your heart today and, uh, and as you go through this coming week, you realise the Lord is the one who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is the one that goes with us. He is our comforter. He is our guide. He is our advocate before the Father. God bless you and have a great week serving the Lord Jesus. God bless you now.